Welcome to the Twisted Tentacle Inn. I'm your innkeeper, Vase Odin, and today we will be discussing the aloof keyword. This guide is intended for new players, so I'm keeping spoilers down to a minimum. The aloof keyword is one of the mechanics of the game that can confuse new players. Let's look at the official wording from the rules reference. An enemy with the aloof keyword does not automatically engage investigators at its location. When an aloof enemy spawns, it spawns unengaged. An investigator may use the engage action or a card ability to engage an aloof enemy, and an investigator cannot attack an aloof enemy while that enemy is not engaged with an investigator. Seems pretty straightforward, but there is a lot more to the aloof keyword because of other mechanics in the game that can cause some confusion. So we're gonna dive into a few examples, real world, real game examples, and some names have been changed to avoid spoilers, and we will go ahead and take a look at these so we can better explain the best uses of the aloof keyword. At its most basic definition, an enemy with the aloof keyword doesn't engage and can't be attacked unless you engage them first. So some important things to note about aloof enemies. Uh, they still produce universal effects and follow the forced keyword when they have it. Aloof enemies also still move during the enemy phase if they have the hunter keyword. So they'll move around the board and follow you around as normal. They just won't attack. They cannot be attacked unless you engage them first, which you can use as an action or you can use a card like taunt. And finally, aloof enemies with an action or arrow symbol can still have those actions activated without having to engage them first. And this includes the parlay action. So you'll have a lot of aloof enemies in this game uh, that'll be standing in a location and they'll have a parlay action as a triggered action. You can still parlay with those enemies even when they're still aloof. Now, if an aloof enemy attacks you due to a card effect, it becomes aloof again unless the card specifically says that that card loses aloof or that the enemy engages you. So it specifically has to say that it engages you and attacks you for it to remain engaged, otherwise it becomes aloof one more time. Now if it does engage you, once they're engaged, aloof enemies attack during the enemy phase as normal and remain engaged until disengaged somehow, like if you use the evade action, or if it's killed, meaning that they still take attacks of opportunity if you're engaged with them and perform an action that is not fight, evade, parlay, or resign. If they're engaged, they're free to, you're free to attack them as normal. They do not disengage at the end of the turn unless there's specific text that says so. If you evade an aloof enemy you engaged previously, they do not re-engage when they ready during the enemy phase. They go back to being aloof. So let's take a few examples and break down the effects of the aloof keyword in order to see how it affects certain scenarios. I'm not going to be using the card's real names or images so that I can avoid some spoilers. So first, the following enemy in this scenario doesn't have aloof, but the agenda card grants all enemies with the criminal keyword the aloof keyword. Therefore, this guy and all criminal enemies are aloof during the first agenda. This guy also has the hunter keyword. When you start this scenario, he starts in play at a different location from the players. Due to his hunter keyword, he still moves one location towards the investigators during the enemy phase. But because he has the aloof keyword, he doesn't engage nor does he attack. He just lingers at the investigator's location, watching the investigators closely and suspiciously. He doesn't like people sticking their nose where it doesn't belong. Reading his text closely, you can see that if you gain any clues while he's at your location, he immediately engages and attacks. This supersedes the aloof keyword since it's a forced effect. Basically, you can avoid having to fight him early in the scenario by moving away during your turn and make sure that you gain clues while he is at a different location. Alternatively, you can use an action to engage him and start combat with him as normal. Once you engage him, he can attack you during the enemy phase. Let's now look at an aloof enemy with a universal static effect. Everyone's favorite, the birdie aka Furious Furry. The birdie has an effect that gives all investigators at their location minus one to all stats. They have the hunter and aloof keyword. This means the creature will follow you around moving one location toward the investigator's location during the enemy phase. When they reach a location they just sit there, perched on higher ground and singing their strange song 
giving you a penalty to all stats. They won't attack or damage you, but you'll have a penalty as long as they're in your location. Finally, let's look at a non-hunter aloof enemy. The dreadlocked mobster sits in the trees shooting at you from afar. During the enemy phase, they attack you if you're not at their location and are at a connecting location. If you do end up moving to their location though, they're going to hide in the trees and they're not going to attack you because they're aloof. So they're hiding from you, but the minute you move away again, they'll shoot you again if you're at a connecting location during the enemy phase. Um, so this is an interesting one because of the way that it works. It, it doesn't do a normal attack, it doesn't engage you, but as we mentioned earlier, it still is dealing damage to you without having to engage you. And it still remains aloof, so if you want to kill it, you need to move to its location, use an action or a card to engage it, and then attack after that. There are plenty of enemies with the aloof keyword in the game. In fact, there's aloof enemies in every single campaign release so far. Keep in mind these basic rules for the aloof keyword and you'll be on your way to victory against these foes. As you can see, the aloof keyword is a great mechanic that allows for some interesting narrative within the use of a simple mechanic. I just love visualizing the reason why the, why the uh, enemies are aloof. Um, the guy that follows you keeping an eye on you and the minute you get too much information or stick your nose in too far, he just starts beating you up. Or the guy hiding in the bush, uh, if you get too close he hides so you don't see him and you can't attack him, but shoots at you when you're far away. Or the birds that fly above your head and you can't reach them, but they sing their song terrorizing, terrorizing you from afar. Really awesome narrative just from one keyword. I, I love it. And that does it for today's video on the aloof keyword. Hopefully this video has helped you with using the aloof keyword correctly. Leave any questions or comments down there in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them and get back to you. This is Innkeeper Vase Odin talking with you from the Twisted Tentacle Inn's darkest corner. Check in anytime. I'll talk to you then.